Hey guys, it is Miposki. Once again, I am here making my updated 7.33 Meepo guide. I think we're on 7.33D now. Yes, we are. It came out yesterday. So without further ado, I'm going to show you guys how to not only climb MMR, MMR with Meepo, but quite literally stomp every game you play with him. This hero is incredibly strong. I think he's broken as hell if you know what you're doing. And I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to get to the point where you can breeze through games. 20 minute GG every freaking game and uh, i'm gonna show you guys that right now so without further ado let's jump into it first things first i'm gonna show you guys how to set up your hotkeys i've gone over this a few times so if you've already seen the section on the last meeple guide or maybe you watched my video about hotkeys you can skip this part i'll, I'll leave a timestamp to go past it but for the people who haven't let's get right into it so for select hero i have two now just keep in mind you can make your hotkeys whatever you're comfortable with uh it's up to you for poof for you asking on Poof, I use Quick Cast. That is the only thing I use Quick Cast on, and my uh, Mega Meepo, I suppose. Net, I do not. The so first things first, for Select Hero, I have two. So when I press two, it's only the main Meepo. For the next, I have Select All Controlled Units. That is going to be every unit you have control over, and that is going to include a Mantis Style and Illusion Eye Prune. So when you press four, everything's going to be selected. Going down here, we have select all other units. This hockey is super important because what this is going to do is it's going to select every unit aside from your main Meepo. And this is great when you're trying to set up fights and bait fights with your main clone, which I'll get into a little bit later. Now that we're done with these, uh, you know, more simple hockeys, you're going to come over to the control group area. Next unit, put it on tab. It should be default tab, I think. I mean, if you want to use something else, go ahead. But I highly, w I really wouldn't recommend it. I have B, N, M, and comma. What these do is when I press B, it's Meepo 2, N, Meepo 3, and M, Meepo 4. And if I had a fifth Meepo, which I'll level up real quick, if I were to press comma, I'll just level these up. If I were to press comma, that's going to be Meepo number 5. And you can set these, by the way. All you got to do is you press uh, Control, and you're going to press 5. So now when I press 5, it'll be on Meepo 4. If I want these guys on 5, control 5. Now when I press 5, it's these two. And that's how you're going to set it up. Now, I like 5 to be all Meepos like this. Yep. So, yep, control and then press whatever desired hockey you have while selecting the units uh, that you want to be in that control group. For the next, we have a, another control group section, which I have 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. What 5 is, is 5. When I press 5, 5 is going to select all of my Meepos, but it's not going to select my Mantas. Whereas if I press 3, my, me my Mantas will be selected with all my Meepos. When I press 6, it's going to be Meepo 1 and 2. Now, I use 1 and 2 up until I get 25. Once I get 25, I rebind it to Meepo 2 and 5 so that uh, I can micro these two together. But typically, the game's over before I get 25. So I'll put it back on that. Now, 7 is going to be Meepo 3 and 4. And 8 is going to be my Manta style illusions alone. Yep, yep. The reason why I have all these hotkeys bound is that micro and Meepos throughout the map, it's going to exponentially increase your farm speed and allow you to micro more throughout the fights. I highly recommend hotkeying each individual Meepo as well as set up control groups so you can farm them together or individually if you would like as you get more items. So that's basically the general... Uh, Way to set up your hotkeys, set them up whatever hop, hotkeys you would like. The only thing I 100% recommend is when you are setting up your individual Meepos, B, N, M, and comma, which I have, is that you want to do it in a chronological order on your keyboard. So B for two, N, M, comma, as you can see, four keys in a row. Same with the Meepos. This makes it easy so that if they have, you know, an enemy hero and they're hitting, who are they hitting? They're hitting Meepo 2. I can easily press B and net them. And it's easy to know who's taking damage and get them the hell out of there. Dig them. Whatever you got to do to get, get them out of there. Get the hell away from me. So yeah, that's general hockey guide. Uh, you know, and uh, make sure that's the most important step to starting your Meepo journey. Really quick, I guess I'll go over. I know Poof Autocast has come out. If you plan on being like a legitimate Meepo spammer and you want to actually improve your micro on this hero, I wouldn't use Poof Autocast. Poof Autocast, what it does is when I'm selecting the main Meepo and I press W, they'll all just poof automatically. But this makes it kind of hard to micro throughout the map and it's going to mess you up. I wouldn't recommend it. You know, just get used to tab W, tab W, tab W, tab W. Just practice it in the, in the lobby. You'll get it down quite easily. 
All right, I'm going to show you one of the more simple Meeple mechanics, which is the Blink Poof. This really isn't hard. Remember, 3 is going to select all the Meepos. Or you can press 5 if you have Manta Illusions out on the map currently. So, you know, you don't want to accidentally select your Mantas by pressing 3 because I might mess you up on your Poof. So, press 5 or 3, whatever. What you're going to do is you're going to Poof, 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 and Blink. That's all it takes. It takes, you know, jump into a demo lobby, 5 minutes of practice, you'll get it down super easily. Select all your other Meepos, poof, 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 select the main, and blink. That's all it takes. It's very simple, very easy. Five minutes of practice, you'll be able to get it down consistently. You might mess up a few times in game, but over time, it'll become muscle memory, and you're going to have no problem with it, I promise. Give it a try. You'll get it down. You have in mind? All right. Now I'm going to show you guys a few useful applications against some classic Meepo counters. And there's obviously way more cases with the Aghanim Scepter. This item is pretty insane. It, it's essentially a get out of jail free card. Some people like to use it as a mega meepo up and go hit hit people. I don't really like that too much just because it's so easy to stun a single meepo and control one meepo unless you have a BKB. It, it's okay. I prefer to use the Ags as a get out of jail free card, similar to how the dig used to work and still does work on the shard, which is awesome. A max HP restore of 35% is crazy. The shard, you want to pick it up as soon as you pay, as soon as you can. Within reason, you know, if you need stats to fight, then get your stats. But if you feel like you're strong enough to kill them and you just want to stay alive, then that's the time to pick up the shard. You don't want to go too early where suddenly you're like, oh, I have shard, but you have no damage. You have no HP to survive anyway and kill them because then it's completely pointless. Defeats the purpose. Shard is to help you win the fight, not to help you not die in the fight, right? If that makes sense. But anyway, let's get into the eggs. What's great about this item is it's, like I said, it's get, get out of jail free card. RP'd, Mega Meepo up. Easy, easy, easy. Hold on, let me put on free spells real quick. Oh, shit. All right, that's great. That's one That's one case for it. Here we go, Necrophos, a classic Meepo counter with the Dagons, right? He's getting Reaper, Mega Meepo up. He's alive. Cool, cool use of it there, too. And for our last one, we have the Wyvern Curse. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, well, I messed that one up a little bit, but... Typically, that won't happen, right? You know, hopefully you're better than I am at, <laughs> at not getting cursed. So here we go. You get cursed. Mega Meepo up. What it's going to do, it completely disjoints it. It just kind of bugs your Meepos out and freezes them, but you take no damage. The Ags is great for many situations, as well as if you're just getting right-clicked and one Meepo's low HP, you can just Mega Meepo up and either continue the fight or get them the hell out of there. This item is completely get out of free gel card. I mean, you have 37 armor. 232 damage and i don't even have any items right now so imagine when you have the max stats and all that when do you buy the eggs i would say third or fourth fourth item i don't think rushing eggs is that great i think going other items is going to help you take over the game much much faster but i'll explain why in another section because uh it goes hand in hand with the meepo strategy that i like to utilize to stomp games and get them over quick and high in more brackets as well as low so we'll get into that in just a little bit All right, let's get into your skill build and itemization. Here we go. Now, obviously, generally, if you're against, if you're mid, you can start with Ransack. If you're against a melee hero, if you're against like a mag or something, Ransack's great. Generally, I start with Poof just because you can secure the range creep with it. And people overestimate the power of Poof. You can fake Poof and, I mean, it does 80 damage, but people treat it like it does 500, like it used to at level one. It really doesn't do too much damage, but if you fake Poof, prom I promise you, like the enemy mid is going to run away from it almost every time. So it's pretty good for faking out and securing creeps and getting the range creep as well. But, you know, generally the build you want to do is 1-1-1. One, 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 and then with your ult. Reason why is because Meepo is the strongest level 4 power spike in the game, without a doubt. You get the second Meepo, you have the nets, you do a ton of damage. It's pretty crazy. From here, you have two options. If you think that you can run over the enemy team and go fuck them up, you're going you're gonna to max out Ransack, because Ransack, it's pretty crazy. You get 18 life uh, life steal on each Meepo, so you're realistically life stealing, what is that, 36, I believe? Maybe if my math is correct, 36 a hit, which is, you know, it, it's pretty good, especially considering you have 11 armor with no items. Your hero's pretty freaking tanky. So if they don't have high spell damage and high burst, low levels, you can just max out this Ransack and go beat the shit out of people and take over the game from minute, minute 8. You can just start rampaging the enemy jungle, enemy side lanes, wherever and i'll show you an example of that now if they do have let's say they have a lineup like this this is a pretty hard, li hard lineup to gank right if you have a mid pango carry you know offlane mag with a shaker wyvern you're probably not gonna be able to run at these guys and kill them they could probably shut you down pretty easily in this case you would want to max poof 
stack up some ancients and farm your items and build a net worth lead and make smart plays with your team to take these fights. Because in, in a game like this, you kind of have to use your brain. In a free meepo game, if you know what you're doing, you can just turn your brain off, listen to music, watch Netflix, and you'll go 20-0 and every time. I told you, this hero's freaking stupid. It's broken. I know it's broken. I'm not going to deny it. But people like to make it seem like Meepo's a horrible hero. I think people just don't know how to play it correctly. That's essentially it. Now for your talents, if you max poof, you're going to go for the poof damage. If you max uh, ransack, you're going to go for strength. Because if you max ransack, you're going to keep poof at level 1, and you're going to skill up your stats. Stats are sick on this hero, because the more stats you have, the stronger, the faster you right-click, the tankier you are, the more you're going to lifesteal, the harder it is going to be to kill you, because they have low burst damage, right? But if you have the poof damage, 30 poof damage is a lot. Because that's realistically, that is 60 poof damage because it's 30 on the initial poof and the arrival. And if you poof in one place, you're doing 160 damage per poof times four. It's a lot of freaking damage and it's pure damage. So no match resistance goes through it at all. Yep. And then from there, you know, you can keep scaling stats, level up your net if you need it. Yep. That's up to your own discretion. You'll figure it out as you go. For your starting items, uh, whoops. Starting items, my starting inventory almost always looks like this, unless I'm against some like Batrider or Clink's mid and I need a stick. But generally, this is my starting item. Against hard mid heroes, let's say you're against, uh, you know, let's say TA, let's say you're against Pango, let's say you're against some some annoying bursty hero on lane. Leshrac, you can fly out a Sov or two before you finish a Wraith Band. Always finish one Wraith Band. You can get two if you're having a great game. I don't, it's not that necessary. It's not that great. It's like an extra two agility. Two strength. I mean, for the amount of gold it costs, it's it costs three hundred sixty-five gold for you know two agility and two strength. I mean, it's okay. It's not that great. So I get one. Then your strongest power spike. Your next strong power spike is going to be your treads. Once you get treads, you are a beast. You have eighteen freaking armor. I mean, obviously on level fourteen, but it's probably realistically more around eleven or twelve armor. But that's crazy for like seven eight minutes in the game. I digress. Your next item, almost always, trust me boys, the Diffusal Blade. And I'll explain the Diffusal Blade. Diffusal Blade is such a sick item because you can keep your net at level 1 and you can just walk into a side lane and Diffusal these guys and you do so much damage. It's It's got great build up. Build up is sick. You know, you get a Blade of Alacrity, 10 agility, gonna help you farm. This is cheap, this is cheap. It's an awesome item and I'll show a replay example of why it's so good and how to make it work. Now your next item... You can either go Dragon Lance. When you get Dragon Lance, in a game like this, I would get Dragon Lance because they have a lot of bursts. They're going to try to fuck me up. So Dragon Lance is great because you get the extra strength, you get some extra stats. It's almost like a better Wraith Band, right? If you're in a game where you feel like you don't need it, I like to go for the Mantis style. Now, why do I like to get Mantis style? And I'll explain that to you right now. The reason why Manta is awesome is because when you're going up against heroes like this, these are, cla these are classic Meeple counters, right? Classic. But they all have one thing in common. This guy wants to RP all my Meepos. This guy wants to cleave all my Meepos. This guy wants to curse all my Meepos. This guy wants to Echo Slam all my Meepos. And this guy wants to W and roll and Q all my Meepos. Yep, yep. But if I'm only here fighting with the main Meepo with my Manta and my Diffusal, it's pretty hard for them to use their spells. Because if he sh Echoes, that's crazy. Like 20 damage. He Qs, rolls, 20 damage. He stuns and hits me. No damage. He RPs me. Nothing. So they're kind of standing here. With these big spells waiting for me to commit because they know that they need to commit their big spells on me right they want to use their big spells on me they don't care about my team i am priority number one meepo is a priority number one hero and i would put him in the same category as a huskar as an alchemist as an od or you know well uh, you know a troll something some shit like that right meaning they want to kill you first in the fight they want to blow all their shit and fuck you up but if I'm only here with one Meepo, they can't really use their spells. So they just kind of stand here doing fucking nothing while either my team is fucking them up or I'm here fucking them up too. Because Wyvern's over here waiting to curse me. I'm only here with my main Meepo. Look how much damage I do. This thing does a lot of freaking damage. You know, 185, 31 armor. I'm not easy to kill despite only being here with one Meepo. So that's the biggest point I want to make is that your ultimate, it is an ult. You need to treat it as an ult. You don't want to show your hand the second the second the fight starts you know think of it like poker you know you're not going to flip your cards after the uh you're not going to bet your whole fucking pot after you see three cards thrown in texas hold them no you're going to wait you're going to bait them a little bit let them get comfortable and let them show what they're going to do first once this guy rps and this guy echoes and this guy rolls then i could just poof in and this fight's over they have no damage to kill me and that's the strength of this that's the strength of this build is you can essentially make these big card counters 
it makes their game really hard because they are waiting for you to commit, but you won't. So they can't commit either. And you have four of the heroes on your team that are beating the shit out of them, so they have to commit their spells. And once they do, you can poof in and you can fuck them up. That is why Manta Defusal is so strong, because you can fight with this main clone and not put your other clones at risk. These guys are farming the entire map while you're standing on the enemy side of the map, applying pressure and making these guys sit by, you know, sit behind their 2-2 tower because they're terrified. They can't kill you. You're only here with one Meepo. They can't do shit. They have to wait for you to make a mistake. So don't make a mistake. Do not poof in these Meepos too soon. Let these guys use their spells on your team, on you, whatever. Once they use it, poof in and fuck them up. If you poof in any sooner, they're going to fuck you up. So keep it in mind, your ult, it is an ult. Treat it like one. Now, going forward for your next items, that, it's really up to you. If you want to go blank, go blank. Scotty, you know, whatever you think you need. You can go Ags, you can go Shard. You know, whatever you need. Get the Ags, get the Shard. It, it doesn't really matter. Once you have these core items, now it's, you know, do I need more damage? More HP? Go Scotty. Do I need some catch? Go blank. Do I need a Hex? Go Hex. Do I need an Axe? Go Axe. Whatever you want. It's up to you. But that's generally the main play style, and I'm going to get into it. I'm going to show you exactly how to utilize it and how to use it effectively, as well as make rotations and how to farm with your other Meepos on the map while you're applying pressure. Uh, but first, I'm going to show you guys a, a few tips and tricks, just some, some Meepo bugs, mechanics, whatever you want to call them, and uh, I'll show you guys those right now. All right, so Meepo tips and tricks. And before I jump into it, I did forget to go over the talents aside from the first two. For the 15 talent, I chose Evasion. Obviously, I always recommend to go for... It's not going to let me select it now, huh? Hold on. Flash level up five. Okay. I almost always recommend these two I explained. If you have, you know, Ransack, go Strength. If you have Poof, go Poof. I always recommend getting Earth Grant, Earthbind Grant's True Strike on targets. Evasion is Meepo's... Biggest counter when it comes to killing heroes, and somebody could pick up a butterfly, a halberd, a radiance at any point. This talent completely shuts down that that uh, that option for the enemy team. And sometimes, and honestly, most of the time, people don't even know this talent exists. So sometimes the enemy carrier will get a butterfly, and you'll just kill him because he has a stupid item. Because you have true strike anyway. I always recommend getting Earthbind Grant's true strike on targets. It's crazy. For twenty, always, hundred percent of the time, get eight plus ransack heal. When Meepo was broken back when I think it was 7.0 7 released and they first introduced Ransack and Meepo had like a 75% win rate. Meepo's Ransack only healed, I think it was like 20. Now it heals 26. So you actually have six more lifesteal than you did back when Meepo had a 75% win rate. Uh, you know, minus three Earthbind cooldown, you shouldn't be struggling to manage Earthbinds anyway. It's only a 10 second cooldown and, you know, it, it lasts eight seconds if you hit all four. So you should be pretty chilling uh, on the Earthbind. So you don't really need this talent. And then for 25, almost always get another clone. If you need an item, you know, you can get Pack Rat, but, you know, it, it's it's okay at best. Just what I was thinking. So for the Meepo tips and tricks, I'll show you guys the first one. Boots of Travels. Check this out. If you buy... Oh, ah, shoot. Okay. If you buy Boots of Travels and you TP your clone... You can sell the Boots of Travels for the full price, so you can technically TP anywhere on the map for free. You don't have to commit to buying it. it now, if you TP your main clone, it's going. you're not going to be able to sell it. So you have to TP your clone and then sell it within the 10 second duration. But you should, if you have 2,500 gold, you know, you can be anywhere on the map at any time. The second one, a hero like Omni Knight. This is, Omni Knight's a great hero of Meepo because if he repels your main clone, these guys have 2,500 HP and I repel him. Every single Meepo gets the strength buff from Heavenly Grace. 28 strength they gain. So now I just gained 650 HP, which is a freaking lot. That's a lot of HP to gain. So that's great. And the last tip I have for you for something that's going to make it a little bit easier to hit your nets. It is a command. You're going to do Dota underscore player underscore smart multi unit cast and type true and press enter. What this is going to do is rather than having to cycle through each of your Meepos to throw your nets, what you can do instead is if you have them all selected, you can just stay on the main Meepo and it will find the next available net for you to throw, which is awesome. It's going to make hitting your nets much easier. The only downside to it is you do have to wait for the animation on the previous clone to finish. So if you're spamming it like this, it's going to wait till the previous net hits and lands. So that's the only downside to it, but you can still shift through and throw more nets if you need. But yeah. Those are some cool Meepo tips and tricks that I would uh, recommend utilizing. 
I mean, one more, I guess I should say, is that if the enemy team glyphs, you'll heal through Ransack. So if you're taking high ground and you and the enemy team glyphs the creeps and you hit them, you'll get HP back from the Ransack, but the creeps won't take damage, obviously. So it's basically like a free fountain, considering how much HP you get and how fast you attack on this hero. So yeah, those are some, you know, some tips to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, let's get into the replay review section. I'm going to show you guys how to utilize the play style and the item builds that I was talking about previously. The only thing you really need to know about the laning stage is you want to abuse your high armor. You have 8 armor starting, and it's 11 if you're standing near the tower. So you're super, super tanky in lane. So you want to hit the enemy hero as much as you can and just harass them away from the creeps. You're going to see me hitting, trading with this guy a lot because I just have such insane armor that it's hard for him to stand, stand next to me and trade me. Obviously, it's a Bloodseeker who's pretty good against meatball in mid lane i mean it's not the craziest it's not a crazy hard matchup you should farm pretty well but you know you're not gonna harass him out of lane most of the time this guy happened to be not that great the hero fortunately for me i suppose so i'm just gonna zoom through this i mean you can see i'm hitting him a lot just farming i'm really just waiting for level four once i'm level four i get my second meatball and then the lane gets easy so i'll show you guys i don't want to skill my level four yet because most people aren't that attentive towards your levels i notice that a lot so if you hold the skill point i could just walk right up to this dude net him and there we go now i'm gonna poof it up and i'm gonna glyph this wave because i don't want him to get hp back from that blood right and now his lane's kind of over because now i can just deny every creep and that's something you want to keep in mind as well is that now i have 128 damage per hit so now i can just out cs this guy I don't want to dive too hard. I don't want to make any crazy plays. I really just want to control him. Now, he makes a silly decision and decides to step up, and he's going to die for that. Whatever. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep denying the lane and controlling and shutting him down. And head towards my tread timing. In this particular game, I'm maxing Ransack and keeping Poof level 1. The reason why is because their lanes are pretty gankable, and they don't have that much burst damage. They have a bit of control, and they have a bit of DOT damage, but... You know, I, they can't really kill me unless they bring their entire team, which is a huge commitment in the early game. If you, if I gank bot and they TP all their heroes, and let's say they kill me, that's four TPs on cooldown. That's a really, really big deal in this early game. Because that means this lane's free farming, this lane's free farming, the entire jungle's open, and they have five heroes sharing XP bottom. So you're winning that trade anyway, which is what makes this hero so cool. This guy ganks, he's going to die again. Whatever. From here, I want to start making my moves, because now I'm level 6 with 3 in Ransack. I have my treads, which is my big, big timing, because now I have 415 movement speed with uh, 13 armor. So I can start ganking top, and I get an illusion rune. I'm going to send that bottom. So now, around this timing, this is when you want to go start winning your side lanes if you can. If you can make plays on the side lanes, go freaking gank, because it is hard to respond. Because when you gank with this Meepo, you're essentially sending two heroes top. You have two heroes, so now you have four heroes in this top lane. They're never going to win this trade unless they hit, unless they TP and heavy commit their team, which means Troll gets no farm bottom, DK free farms, I open the map for him, and there's a good chance I don't even die because I have strength threads. It's around 1,200 HP with 13 armor. It's way too much for them to deal with. So ganking side lanes around level 6 with treads is great. Sometimes you can wait till 7, 8. It's fine. You know, It's, it's up to your own discretion, but I'm going to make my play now. So we run up here. I don't even necessarily help this dude down here too much. And as this is going on, I'm farming mid. I'm going to poof bottom on these illusions. And now we're pressuring bottom. We kill him. And check this out. They just TP'd three heroes all the way bottom. But I'm level 7. And I have, you know, 1,200 HP. I'm, I'm, you know, they TP'd three heroes. I'm still full HP. Nobody's level 6. And we have everybody down here. This fight, this is an easy fight to take. He gets disrupted. This fight's done. And we're just going to dive. And he's going to die too. This is such a huge play. It's seven minutes of the game. We're on a 2k gold lead. Because they just committed their entire team. We just practically wiped them aside from Bloodseeker. This guy's kind of AFK. I don't know why he didn't TP. Maybe it was CD? No, I think he's just bad. He probably should have TP'd to that. Because whatever. It doesn't matter. But now we have a huge lead. Troll just dies. We kill them. Uh, bottom so now they committed a lot we I mean obviously we did too but we won the fight so it's no big deal and that's because they can't take me out they don't have enough damage so I'm so strong that I can just run around and terrorize this map and apply so much pressure that they feel like 
they're suffocating before the game even hits 10 minutes. They feel like they have to respond to this play, when in reality they don't. And even if they do, they can't win. And that's the real power of Meepo, is that you are so freaking strong at like level 7, level 8. I think you're one of the strongest heroes, you know, well, yeah, one of the strongest heroes in the game within reason. Obviously, there's better heroes that do more damage and have more control, but your hero is very, very strong. So you want to treat it as such. You don't want to spend your time, you know, yeah, I could spend my time AFK farming the jungle, but what does that do? Because then troll's free farming, the offlane's free farming, and now essentially, I'm just trading farm. So why trade farm? Let's come bottom, let's fuck them up, and let's ruin the game and build a gold lead rather than trade farm with these guys who I'm stronger than. If I'm stronger than them, I don't want to trade farm. I want to shut them down, and I want to take their towers and suffocate the map as early as possible. Because once you build a big enough lead on Meepo, it's game. Alright, I pulled up another replay for this section, just because this will show a bit of a... You know, I showed how to play the early game, how to gank side lanes, which I did to an extent. This lane's a bit harder. They have two slows and a save, and a, you know, two, ex three escape cores, so it's kind of harder to gank them. But this is another... What I wanted to show you is how to take fights against these hard, hard heroes. They got a mag with RP. They got a Pugna with Suck, they got a Slark with Ult, they got a Pango with Roll, and I want to show you exactly how to take these fights against these tough, tough heroes that, you know, if they get their spells on you, they can probably kill you and control you pretty easily. But this is how you can play around, outmaneuver them to the point where you simply just outplay them, and you build a strong enough gold lead that you can just stomp the game despite what they have. And the most important time to do this is in the early game. You want to shut them down early, right? 14 minutes. Here we go, we have a bit of a strange fight. We have three heroes here. We have Seven, me, Bristle, and I think Bat's on the way. Right? Now, Pango, obviously, is going to TP, and we know he's going to TP. So I need to be careful here, because they got the RP, not only that, but they also have the save, and they have the roll coming. And maybe Veno, too. So I'm going to take this fight kind of slow. Meanwhile, it's going, you're going to see, I'm farming on my other Meepos. I'm not going to commit them yet. They're, they're hitting camps, and they're building, they're building net worth, so I can get towards my next item, even if this play doesn't work out. Great. So I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play this fight slow. I don't want to show my hero yet, because then they're gonna know exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna kind of sit here on the sidelines and wait for a good opportunity. I'm gonna run up. There we go. They used roll. They used RP on my team. Now Bristle might die. That's okay because Meepo. I'm the game winner. Realistically, if I get a strong enough gold lead, it's time to. It's time. You know, I can solo carry this game. So now that he used RP and rolls down, I'm gonna go commit. And now this fight is completely free. They have, they have, there is nothing they can do to me now. And as we know, Pango TP'd in because we saw it. So Pango, he's just going to die too. He has no way out. And that's three kills in a pretty tough fight. I mean, that's three of the strongest heroes against me. And we just wiped the floor with them like it was nothing. Obviously, we had more heroes than they did. But the main premise still stands. I waited for them to use their spells. I kind of stood there, helped out my team with a defusal, a few nets, and I hit a few times. But once I use those spells, I'm a poof in, I'm going to kill them. And it makes the fight so easy. Go and now, me. you know, I'm, I have a huge net worth advantage because I'm not making silly plays. And we're going to see a similar thing here. I know that Pango has no TP. Because remember, Pango uses his TP and he just shows bottom. So I know that he ain't going to TP to this. So then when they show their two supports mid, these are free kills. I can just walk up and kill these guys. Pango's not coming to this play. He can't. Mag's here. Mag don't got RP. What's he going to do? Absolutely nothing. I'm going to leave. Try to help Bristol out top. We force Slark out of the lane. And meanwhile, I'm still farming. And I have control of their entire jungle at the moment. And if they come here, I just meant to poof out. I'm going to help out the Bristol and get out of here. And this will give you a pretty good idea of how to take fights like this. It's when they show... You want to go in and commit when they show their key heroes. Who am I scared of? I'm scared of getting RP'd. I'm scared of getting rolled. And to an extent, I'm scared of Pugna and Venno. To an extent. Their spells are annoying. They're not going to insta-kill me, but they're definitely going to help them kill me, right? They're going to they're gonna disable me from doing exactly what I want to do. I'm going to go Axe this game just because they do have frustrating heroes to play against. And you're going to see what happens top here in a second. They, te they show Pango, Mag, and Venno sitting here defending mid-tower. But I just see their two biggest cores, the only people I'm scared of TP. Venno, I'm just going to walk on the tower, I'm just going to kill him. I mean, what is he going to do? He just dies, and we get a mid-tower. Our Bristle dies, but you know, that, that's his problem. I didn't tell him to dive the tower. Now we walk up here, kill Pango, or kill uh, Pugna, and Slark's going to die too. It just makes these fights so easy when you, when you really keep in mind of what you're actually scared of in the game. And, you know, I think most, most of the time when people do play Meepo, they know what they're scared of. 
So when you see those spells being committed or when you see that a particular hero can't be at an area of the map that you're in, that's when you want to that's when you really want to hit them hard, right? And if they are there, you want to take the fight slow and you want to see what they're going to do. If he doesn't roll, that's okay cuz that's a big ult and you still do a lot of damage regardless. So at some point he's going to have to commit a spell, same with RP. You know? So if I'm not committing, they're not committing. And if they do, the fight's over regardless. Because my Seven and Bristle and, you know, my other four heroes are going to carry the fight if they don't use their spells. So it just makes it so, so easy. I think from here we go Roche, and I'm going to show you guys the last example on this play. We want to bait Pango up here a little bit. Pango uses roll, and I'm telling my team, I'm saying, sit right here. Oh, whoops. I'm telling my team, I'm saying, don't show, don't show, just sit here, wait for roll to end, and we can slay them. And that's exactly, we're just going to sit here and let Bristle take the damage. Roll ends, and now it's time to fuck them. And now they just die. And we get two free kills, and we get a Roche, right? It's all about those key spells. Once those key spells are used, you can just commit, and there's nothing they can do. And that's the general ideas that I want to get across to you. As for farming, I mean, that's something that you're going to naturally pick up. I can do a further in-depth re uh, replay review if you'd like over exactly my mindset on farming and such, but I don't want the video to be too, too long. I really just want to get a point across these key points of pressuring early with how strong you are in games where you can. And if you're in a tough game like this is to an extent, you want to take these fights slow and you want to take them smart. Because if you just kind of go balls to the wall, commit YOLO, there's a good chance you're going to die and Meepo's not a hero you want to die on. You get a lot of gold, a lot of XP, and you give a lot of gold and you give a lot of XP. So dying on Meepo is definitely far more punishing than any other hero in the game. You know, abuse your level 11 power spike, ab abuse your level 4, abuse your treads power spike, defusal, and make these plays when you can, man. I mean, your hero is really strong if you just take the fight smart and you calculate it and you know exactly what you're scared of. Because once rolls down, once RP is down, they just don't have the damage to kill me. They just don't. Now, especially considering we have a bristle with the heart at 20 minutes. I mean, they just don't have the damage. And, you know, the fight's just over then. So those are key points I want to get across. If you want me to do a really, really in-depth uh, replay review, leave a comment down below. And, uh, and I'll go over it for you guys and uh, show, show you guys exactly farming patterns and how to do that and such. But those are things that you'll pick up on your own as you continue playing. So yeah, that, that's, the main, uh, that's the main two replay concepts that I wanted to go over when utilizing this, this specific build and baiting with your main Meepo and not only that, but waiting for the right opportunity. So uh, that, that'll conclude the replay section of the video. All right, and for the last section of this video, I just wanted to talk about some of the more difficult mid matchups and what you can expect and how you can expect to play them. Realistically, against these four heroes, if you're playing as a competent player, you're more than likely not going to win this matchup, right? You need these guys to make a mistake because these lanes are brain dead easy for them. Your entire goal with these I'm lanes, going. if you're going mid other. against any of these heroes, is to get level four and kind of just GTFO. I'd recommend, generally, if I'm starting as bat, I'll get a stick, and then I'm immediately going to go for a fast boot, something, something like this kind of build, and then... Uh, as soon as possible, I'm, I'm just going to get boots, and then I'm going to try and just soak up as much XP as I can and get level 4. Because level 4 is so, super important. Same with Huskar, get a boots early. Same with SF, same with Necro. And of course, uh, as soon as the lane starts, your first 200 gold, I always say, buy two subs. Just because these guys are going to do a lot of damage, they're going to harass you a lot. And you don't want to get pushed to that XP range. You want to make sure that you're healthy enough to get last hits when you can. But you also uh, you want to make sure that you're getting XP. Because once you're level 4, you can kind of just GTFO. And you can ask your teammate to gank mid, maybe you kill them, or you can farm the jungle, get your treads, and start applying pressure on their side lanes. Because these heroes, they don't rotate super well, aside from Batrider. But generally, if you have treads and you're fighting with your team and these guys TP in, they're not as strong as they think they are, right? They're very, very strong in a 1v1 scenario, but you, if you can bait them to TP, you and your teammates can bring them down. So that's the main, the main objective. I don't have a replay a recent replay against any of these heroes otherwise i would show you an example of it but the key concept to just get level four head to the jungle get as much xp as you can get your treads and start ganking side lanes and making sure that your side lanes are winning hard because if you if you give these guys free farm mid and then your I side lanes are also you. trading farm or they lose you're gonna you're gonna get stomped right you need to make plays and you need to help your team 
build some sort of advantage back since you technically dropped the ball in the mid lane. So the best thing is to gank side lanes, try and bait them the TP and make smoke plays with your team and kill them. Because these heroes are not hard to kill if you have your team with you, but they're very, very hard to deal with when you're alone. So that's my general tips against these uh, these classic Meepo mid counters. Every other mid hero is pretty, pretty not that hard to deal with, I would think. It just takes a little bit of experience. But these heroes, no matter how good you are, it doesn't matter. It has everything to do with how good they are. So that's that's my general recommendation for trying to deal with these big snowball mid heroes that are going to own you in the laning stage. Nearly... All right, and that's going to conclude my 7.33 Meepo guide. Um, if you guys have any questions or, like I said, want me to go over a more in-depth replay review, I, I'm more than willing to do that. I just didn't want this video to be too, too long, like I said. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe. I always appreciate the support I get from you guys. It's awesome to see uh, so many people so passionate about Meepo. It's an awesome hero, and once you really get down to basics, he's a ton of fun to play. So uh, yeah, definitely subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. I stream on Twitch and YouTube, so uh, my Twitch will be linked below if you want to check me out. Place if you want to check me out playing some Meepo live. And uh, other than that, guys, uh, thanks for watching the video and have a great day. Later.